Oops, I have failed you. I have failed you. For all this time, I have talked about the modern day gaming industry and its belligerent budget cutting issues. But then just the other day, I realized, I realized, I haven't even shown you what we are all fighting for. The Twin Peaks, the Double Domes, the Water Malones, and the Fat Stones. None other than the quintessential budget fullest game of all time, Bayonetta. Bayonetta is a game that reminds me of why I even got roped into playing video games as a hobby over a decade ago. Harkening back to that time where it was all about cocaine and passion instead of disdain and stashing away millions of dollars on the same formulas over and over and over again while hating the customer more than they do their own parents. Not only does it wow with its massive budgets and our fantastic payload, but the camera work is absolutely stunning. Christopher Nolan level cinematography right here, I mean, god damn, that is a nice zoom. Holy shit. I mean, that's gotta be a Sony FEPZ 16 to 35 millimeter F4G because I can see the whole ass frame. So to let them cook and they simmered up a meal so perfect it would make Gordon Ramsay batch out a special splooge of Zacky sauce. It's one giant drug trip where the developer threw every last gameplay feature they could at the wall and it all stuck. The only sad part is that I've beaten it so many times that I should probably stop for my health and all. But then I think someone has to find mankind's limits. Why not me? Now without further ado, happy mommy's fuck Mother's Day pimps. Now let's get into this budget packed masterclass and action packed ass blasting. Starting with the whole reason we're here. The only reason I even kept attempting to play this game as a young man, Bayonetta. Hot damn! Hot diggity damn even! This, you modern day AAA fucking fairies, is all I ask for. And before you say it, I know what I've said about the Brits in the past, but Bayonetta is one of the good ones. She's my number one gilf, my top witch. She has budgets like a goddamn modern day Marvel movie, except unlike a modern day Marvel movie, she never disappoints. I'm telling you now, I have plans that I cannot share with you right now because the haters will sabotage me. I have plans that I cannot share with you right now because the haters will sabotage me. So let's just move on. And now I'll throw it over to JFJ for a detailed story breakdown while I collect myself. All right, JFJ, take it away. I want to fuck the shit out of Bayonetta. Is that all you- I want to fuck the shit out of Bayonetta! Thanks, JFJ, for the astute analysis. Couldn't have said it better myself. Now let's move on to the gameplay. The gameplay of Bayonetta is like driving a Mustang with no brakes. The only moment of reprieve you'll get is when you crash into the afterlife at 100 miles per hour. And when given a second chance by the good lord himself, all you can think about doing is hopping right back into the driver's seat. Think of this game's combat a bit like God of War. You rock hard the entire time, or Devil May Cry without the lawn cheer. It's faster than a fat kid running towards a buffet, but at the same time, it's a balancing act between speed and using the Olive Garden assortment of combos in order to maximize your good boy points. But what I love most about the combat is that it isn't made for everyone, and it never tries to be. From the dozens of combos you have to practice live fire, to the immediate attacks after cutscenes end, to the second phases of button mashing QTEs, to the fact that if you run this game on a modern day M2 SSD, you never get to practice any of the moves during the loading screens because they last about as long as any man in the presence of Bayonetta. The bullet hell ship section alone is gonna kill 80% of the people over 50 years old because of how much fucking spinning you have to do to dodge the peppering of green M&Ms getting lobbed at your head. It's one big bukkake of action that's coming hard and coming fast. And you can learn either how to take it or how to beat it. That's the world, son. It's just the way it is. But when you do nail that flow and you do begin to assimilate with the game, there's this wormhole of time that you go into. This place between heaven and hell where time both expands and disappears and all there is, is right here, right now. You, me, two handguns, two shotguns, and that ugly prick over there, it's paradise. Till perdition. Then you get jolted on back into reality due to a random quick time event because you thought you could scratch your nuts during the cutscene? No, 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 no. This is a game from 2009, the second worst era for mankind's thumbs, only behind when M1 Garands were standard military issue. So quit complaining and nut up. Remember, it's all in the wrist, baby. And that leads me to my next point. My god, these bosses had me teetering on the edge more than the fan service cutscenes. And you would think the giant titans would be the hardest ones to fight, and you would be fucking wrong. 
wrong, you moron. It's the human-sized demon people that fucking whiz all around the arena, piecing me up that drive me up the wall. Like this guy right here, for example. Spoiler alert, by the way. This guy right here spams the same move over and over and over again, like I'm fighting my eight-year-old self in a match of Street Fighter, bending off the rapid-fire shin kicks. Then you have two girls, one missile over here, lobbing this hunk of metal back and forth, driving my blood pressure so high, I can feel my third stroke coming on. But, but, but hear me now, and hear me good, because I'm gonna give you some advice from the streets. Calm yourself. Take concentrated thrusts towards your enemy, and remember that it's not about rapid-fire bunny rabbit actions. It's about well-timed, deep dodges that throw you into that bullet time so that you can follow it up by hitting them right in the magic C spot. And listen here now, all right? The first time you fight a boss, you're gonna be all full of piss and vinegar, but I want you to keep in mind that that first time's always the fastest loss. I mean, it just blows by like that. So when it happens to you, just forget about it. The player rarely ever climaxes the boss on that first try, but you know what the player can do? He can keep trying, all right? Come back for round two, for round three, for round four. You don't stop until you get that job done. Just make sure you recharge between tries because you need time to harden back up. Mentally, this is a game of endurance. But with all that being said, that leads us back to cinematography. Now, I know I touched on this earlier, but this is a very important topic, so stick with me here, Pim. Oftentimes, people only think of movies when it comes to camera work, but Bayonetta proves that... It proves, um... I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. In Bayonetta, the cameraman must have shoved the dolly up his ass and skidded across the ground to get these absolutely stunning shots of Bayonetta in action because... Damn! I am incredibly turned on, I mean, taken back by just how well he's able to capture the stunning speed and acrobatic flexibility of Bayonetta. It just makes her such a dummy mommy. I mean, I mean, dominant presence when she comes on screen, and, and I just had to mention it. Anyways, Bayonetta goes on sale for a dollar less than pH premium, so you should definitely pick it up right now, or motherfuck, Bayonetta will force me to do something to you that... That I wouldn't enjoy doing. How do the Americans put it? Oh yes, bust a cap in your ass. I want mommy. I want milk. I want to be held. I want to be comforted. And if you do not do all these things immediately, I will ruin your life.